Hello and welcome back to Week by Week, a podcast about the experience of motherhood. I'm Celeste and I am 15 weeks pregnant. We start this episode with a conversation with me and my husband, Dave Hill. I'm going to be honest, very grumpy to start off with. That's okay. That's where I am. Later on in the episode, I have an interview with my mom where we talk a little bit about what it felt like to find out she was going to be a grandmother. I'll be having her on again in a couple episodes where we'll talk more in depth about my own childhood and her experience with motherhood, but it was really fun to talk to her and I am excited for more. So here we go. Today is Monday, March 23rd, and as you can tell, it's been a day of stress and good ultimately, but I think my nerves are a little bit shot, so that is the energy I'm bringing into the to this recording right now. Hopefully by the end of this, I will be feeling happier because right now I'm pretty grumpy, but you know what? If I don't, then fuck it because I'm home for the night. It's been a long day. It has been a long day. It's been a very long day. So I was saying that we had a we had an grammar appointment today. It would have been our two week appointment. It was supposed to be last Friday, but because of the fever I had the Friday before that, we had a couple of days buffer. So mm-hmm. our doctor is currently out of the office. So we saw a nurse practitioner, and she was great. And she was unbelievably good yes she was wonderful and then the rest of my my doctor will review the charts and everything so Mm -hmm. we'll be double covered so that's really good double covered covered and covered i'm so close to being ready to joke around but i'm just i love it please keep doing it i just i'm trying to meet you there and i'm just so grouchy that's all right i almost sometimes i have to go there first so that you know it's okay to go there yeah that's true and sometimes we get in fights and you go there and I'm not ready to go there. But yeah, we're not but in a fight right we're now. We're not in a fight right now. And, and also, mm-hmm. yes, we do that sometimes. And I guess it goes the other way, too. Sometimes I make jokes and you're not quite ready. Like on sometimes the elevator that happens. today on the way down. Today's appointment, I felt really good about being able to just, like, check in after having the fever and just be in person because that was really scary. It, the fever ultimately lasted less than 24 hours. So that's great, but I felt really scared going in. So just hearing the, her reassurance that everything looked good, both from what she was seeing and because the fever broke under 24 hours and we had Tylenol and we kept it at bay, that she was confident it will be okay. Mm-hmm. At the ultrasound today was a little bit more in-depth than the ultrasounds we've been getting thus far. But at week 20, I have an appointment scheduled where they'll do a full anatomy scan. I just wanted to pop in quickly because I mentioned the anatomy scan. The anatomy scan for us is not going to happen until week 20, so we'll have more info, like I said, then. That said, I wanted to say what Google says about anatomy scans. The anatomy scan is a level 2 ultrasound, which is typically performed between 18 to 22 weeks. Today was kind of like the... I guess, preview to what that's going to be, where they were checking growth. Now they're not just doing the, I think she said head to tushy was the way she phrased it, for growth monitoring. Now they are looking at, we got to see both hemispheres of his brain. All four chambers of his heart. Which is amazing. His femur, like inside his body. Little toes. Little toes, little fingers. It was amazing. It was pretty cool. He was punching. He was, he was like doing a little dance. I was like, he looked like, I, I didn't say this to you yet, but it was kind of like he was like a marionette when you make like a marionette dance. Oh, yeah. Where the, his arms kind of like were bent at the elbow and he was kind of like going up and down. He's still finding his rhythm. That's right. He's still but he had it. rhythm. He, he had did. rhythm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who's who's the father if he has rhythm because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> he has some rhythm. This happened. So. Um, I've got bed rhythm. <laughs> But that was really amazing to see. And I think this is, could be a potential. I could post some of the video because we've been taking video mm-hmm. on an Instagram mm-hmm. uh, or somewhere. Because it's it's really amazing to see the ultrasound and be able... I, really, I have a friend who is pregnant right now. And she was telling me about seeing the brain 
at an ultrasound and how cool that was. So I wasn't surprised that we got to see that, but I didn't know it was going to happen this time. And it was truly amazing and really cool. Makes me feel so super powered that I've grown a brain. You're growing a brain. I'm growing a brain. Growing a brain and a femur and a heart and and kidneys. Kidneys and his little little buddy. And his little man parts. Little man parts good. that we saw today, too. We got the confirmation that, yes, he is a boy <laughs> today, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Mm-hmm. He was a gentleman and had his legs crossed. He was. So we had to get the right angle so we could make sure. I was proud he takes after his papa. Yes, yes. I uh, am going to raise a gentleman, and I have a, I married a gentleman, so good choice on my part, I guess. I'll never tell. <laughs> what? <laughs> Anything? Anything. No. A gentleman, a gentleman never tells. Well, that's the opposite of what, anything. That's the opposite of what we're doing here. So. It's <laughs> oh well, then I, I really shouldn't be on this well, podcast. This is going to be a problem. Because I refuse to tell anything. We're going to have to sort this out. You know what? Let's sort it out right now, <laughs> for the sake of honesty. Uh, but that was really good. And the other thing that was really positive, um, speaking of a gentleman never tells was my subchorionic hematoma has resolved. That means I got cleared to work out, which is just a different thing now. I was planning on going to a Pilates studio or taking yoga. Now this will all be happening at my home. But it's really nice, A, to feel like my body is healing itself, and B, to not feel quite as constrained when it comes to working out because I really missed being able to be more physical. And now I can have sex. What? And have an orgasm, what? which may or may not have been uh, quickly uh, taken care of because I'll never tell. he's a gentleman. But that was something that was really important to me. So I was very happy about that. You wouldn't have guessed it from my mood when I started this, but I was actually feeling great. Um, and what else? And then we did blood work. We did another set of blood work of... That I look at, I think, the neural tubes. Mm-hmm. And again, looking at a couple, I guess, is it chromosomal things? I think it's more now like spina bifida. Yes, and that's right. things in and around the spine. Yes, that's right. So, and with the week 20, we'll continue to look into that. The Everything looked good on this ultrasound. And then the blood test will also mm-hmm. look into that. So we have so the only thing on the next checkup that we're not looking forward to is that I can't go up with her next time because this next office, we're going to a different office because they have different equipment and if, capability. And this particular office, given everything with the coronavirus, they do not allow significant others or anybody else to accompany the pregnant ladies. So the the clinic I go to has said that my spouse, Dave, or a one spouse or one's partner, or I guess whatever, can come still, which I know is not the thing that every clinic is doing. So I feel really lucky that I still get to bring him there because that's... So do I. It's a... I think it's a really special time to share together. And it's... I get really nervous before the ultrasound every time because so I just want to make sure he looks great and everything is good. And Yep. So it's, it, it's really comforting to me to have him there and also just to navigate so I'm not the only one remembering everything that's said mm-hmm. or I'm not the only one asking questions. It's just nice to have a teammate in this because that for me is really important that it's, it is, this is happening in my body, but we are in this together. So that appointment, just really quickly, we'll obviously get into that at week 20 when we do that, but that'll be really going in a more in-depth anatomy scan. And then the cool thing is that we'll be able to do a 3D scan, 3D, 4D scan of his face where my doctor has already warned me he will look very skeletal because he doesn't have fat on him yet. But it'll be amazing to see his face. And that that checks for like cleft palate and all that kind of stuff. But also cleft lip, I guess, is what it would check mm-hmm. for. Mm-hmm. And, Both. but yeah, it'll also be just so cool to start to see what he's developing into yeah. and how he's looking. Even if he is Skeletor. 
even if he is Skeletor. I have a my feeling is that he's gonna look like Dave, so we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, I, th- I think he's gonna look more like you, but we're gonna definitely have to wait and see. It's a but we got really good shots of his little profile today, which is really nice. Um, my doctor said I was very hydrated when I peed today, and yeah. I was very proud of myself. You've really been working hard to I've be hydrated. I've really been trying to drink water. Yeah, you've been doing great. Today was incredibly nerve-wracking with everything going on. I actually did want to talk about that a little bit more. Do you want to talk about the kind of precautions we tried to take going in there and, and the stress we were both feeling? Yeah, I mean, we were trying to, A, like, you know, as so many people are doing when you're outside and about, like we were trying to social distance as best we could. We got pretty lucky with elevators. Um, we timed it out too. Timed it out. There was one time where somebody was like coming up on our heels and we're like, we just went around the corner and came yeah. back after they left. Yeah. I had uh, hand sanitizer. We've got a, a, a precious uh, one Purell hand sanitizer. Gold. Um, which feels like gold. And we use that uh, liberally. And then had some plastic bags that I brought to open doors like you know ziploc bags push elevator buttons push elevator buttons and things like that and uh environmentally not my first choice but we're in a very specific time so but we're not driving anymore we're not driving anymore it comes out in the wash but uh yeah we were taking a lot of precautions and but i will also say that the office did quite well at, at being aware of things as well and and it was good to see i think that the office was up and running fully and Everybody was there doing their level best and and really giving good care and everybody had the right attitude and um, so that that was comforting. But everyone was very friendly, yeah. even though there was a lot of like shuffling people around because they're yeah. trying not to get anyone to cross paths. And I thought that was a testament to the people working there. Absolutely, because it can't be easy, obviously. And I know for us, it's this is such a strange thing to go through. The coronavirus pan- global pandemic is a strange thing for anyone to go through, but it's strange to go through pregnancy right now because you're alert on a different yep. level. I I wouldn't leave the house right now if I didn't have to, yeah. just for my own personal preference. And also because we have compromised immune people around us who I want to do everything I can to try to take care of other people. Yep. So very strange time but we we got through it now we're gonna drink a lot of water and get a lot of sleep and take our vitamins and be as good to our bodies as we can for this next because now we're gonna end up quarantining again for yeah the foreseeable future at least a while so august and we'll definitely be in bed together but i'll never tell Oh my gosh! I'll never Gentleman tell never what tells. happens. And here's the fun part: but we I, will be in bed together to sleep. We, but yes. that's all that I will ever tell. And I will tell you the details of what happened because my true, probably favorite topic is sex. So I'll tell, and then he doesn't have to. Well, you won't have any other verification. You'll just have your word against my non-word. Well, and I guess the other verification for us in general is like we're growing a human being. So there Maybe. is some. Maybe. There's some verification that it happened. <sighs> anyway. No comment. At week 15, the baby is around the size of a pear, which is so cute and also really makes me think of my grandpa who loved pears and he was a great funny man. So it's fun to have kind of associations for a family. His name was also Boris and he really wanted a grandchild named, I guess it'd be, yeah, a grandchild. No, a great-grandchild. Wow. He really wanted a great-grandchild named after him, but I don't think, spoiler alert, I don't think Boris is in the cards for a name, but I will find other ways to honor him. So baby's eyes and ears are, I guess now at this point, they have moved into the proper place and are rapidly growing, which is darling and exciting. I guess baby's skin right now is still see-through, so you could see the developing blood vessels. Oh, and baby's little skeleton is starting to ossify, it says. So that's cute, and he's becoming a little, I guess, a little stronger boned little baby. Other than that, the big takeaway for me from this week was... I really started to see a little bit of a baby bump and it's been fun to take pictures and granted it's very small and being someone who is very conscious about my body, I'm sure I'm keyed into it in a uh, particular way, but 
it's really, really fun to start to see. And I'm excited for the next couple of weeks because I know between now and around week 20 is when they really expect you to pop. So stand by because it's on its way. Uh, another thing that's not quite as fun, I have had more bleeding in my gums, which is something that my guess is just because of the increased blood flow. I kind of blame everything right now on increased blood flow, and I'll look into that more. But when I floss, because I'm a good girl and I floss every night, when I floss, I do notice that my gums are more likely to bleed or when I'm brushing my teeth. So I'm trying to be gentle, but that also is something that can happen. What causes sore and bleeding gums during pregnancy? According to what to expect, there are several factors, including surging hormones and swelling gums. It says, no surprise here, hormones are the likeliest culprit. They also leave your mouth more vulnerable to bacteria and plaque, both of which make for tender gums during pregnancy and can also cause gingivitis and tooth decay in some women if not treated properly. Jeez. Well, I promise I'm flossing and mouth washing and brushing my teeth and all of that, so fingers crossed we get through this. Next is changes to your mouth and eating habits. You also may be producing less saliva during pregnancy and eating more sweets and carbs, creating an oral environment that's friendlier to plaque and cavities. Wow, it just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Next on the list, delayed reaction to morning sickness. If you experienced morning sickness with vomiting earlier in your pregnancy, your teeth and gums could be feeling the temporary effect of those less than pleasant acid baths. I'm very lucky that I had a lot of nausea, but not too much vomiting. And last on the list, your newly finicky senses. You could simply be super sensitive to the taste or smell of mint during pregnancy. Having an aversion to oral care products isn't that common, but studies suggest this could help explain why some pregnant women avoid their usual brushing and rinsing routines. A more sensitive gag reflex might also be to blame. Then it says, what can I do about my bleeding gums when I'm pregnant? First, you have a lot going on, so don't worry too much about your gums. But there are some simple steps you can take now to deal with this pregnancy symptom. And then it says, get checked, take care of your teeth, brush your tongue, swish it out, Remember to rinse, eat right, skip the sweets, and chew on it. I feel like all those are self-explanatory, but chew on it means try a piece of sugarless gum or grabbing a handful of nuts or a small chunk of cheese. All have antibacterial properties. So there you go. Some info on bleeding gums during pregnancy. This is around the time where the weight gain starts to pick up. As I mentioned, I'm very curious and trying to stay curious about what that journey will be like for me. And I'm just going to be as honest as I can about those updates as they continue. So that's it. That's week 15. My guest today is Liz Joseph Busa. Liz is a visual designer who has had an extensive career as both a set and costume designer in theater. She is the mother of two girls and also my mother. I guess I should have led with that. Did I bury the lead there? We all know. She's my mom and she's here and it was really fun to talk to her. And I guess this is a good time to say, I think we have a name. Dave and I have been calling the baby by one name. We were trying to keep it more open-ended, but it I think we've just kind of fallen in love with this name. So we're going to try to keep it a secret for this entire journey, but exciting. Maybe the baby's trying to weigh in. What's his name again? <laughs> nice try. Nice try. Uh, you'll only know either when he's born or when I accidentally spoil it. <laughs> Both are. One is definitive and one is possibility. Yeah, one's a pretty strong possibility, if we're being honest. It is it is very close to coming out of my mouth a lot of times. Tell me what it was like when uh, I first told you. I'm just going to jump in really quick. So when Dave and I told our parents that we were pregnant, it was a little bit after Christmas and his mom was visiting. So we got all of our parents together and had a dinner. After dinner, Dave and I wrapped three boxes and gave them to our parents. And we said we had one more present that we didn't have ready at Christmas time, but we wanted to give it to them. We gave them the present and then we had them open them all at the same time. Each mom got one little newborn size converse and my dad got a little bunny rattle. And that's how we told them. Well, I, I 
knew something was up, but I didn't know what it was <laughs> <laughs> because there was a surprise in the air. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, and we were all together. I mean, there was, but I thought it, it was an extra present the way that you yes. framed it. Obviously, I believed you. That was the goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was thrilling. And I, I, um, I just can't tell you how I didn't, I knew I'd be excited at the idea of a grandchild, but I didn't know I'd be this excited. Oh, that's <laughs> and, so um, I, for, for years, which seemed crazy to me from the time you guys were kind of out of the house, I've had various people say, don't you want to be a grandmother? Aren't you ready to be a grandmother? And I said, I'm ready when my children are ready. But yes, I look forward to it. And I have a grand dog, so I'm satisfied at this point. <laughs> yes, yes, you have two grand pups. <laughs> two grand pups. And so I I always thought that um, I'd be excited about it when it happened, but I wasn't in a rush to have it happen because I wanted to be on your timeline. But I didn't want to be too old when it happened. <laughs> <laughs> but the strong feelings I have, I feel the same super protective feelings that I had with you and your sister where I would mm -hmm. do anything for this baby mm -hmm. <laughs> and just the anticipation of like I was saying to daddy the other day I can't wait to do art projects and to just carry him around and like from yeah. from the day one through his development all the different kind of activities and sharing that we can do I, it just feels like another whole level added to my life Oh, I love that so much. Which is so great. I think you and I are similar where I think that you and I get pretty strong images come into our head a lot mm -hmm. when we think about things. And like, it's really easy to start imagining like really specific experiences. Mm -hmm. Have you had, you said like doing art projects and carrying them around. Have you had any other of those kind of images come to mind when you think about experiences you want to share with him or excited moments you have or anything? Well, so many things. I mean, just mm -hmm. thinking about things as simple as introducing to new foods mm -hmm. or yeah. taking his little hand and going on a walk and looking at the flowers that are blooming. You know, they're just from simple things to larger things like going to a museum or just having conversations. Yeah. And really excited about watching you and Dave parent together. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I just think you're going to be the best parents. <laughs> I can already see how great you're going to be and how loving and how you'll have, you know, the humor and the intelligence and the whole emotional range. And he's going to be a lucky boy. Oh, we're going to be lucky parents. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I want to go back to that, but before we get too far from what you said, I love what you said about uh, walking around and looking at flowers, because mm -hmm. that's a memory I have so clearly of walking around with grandma and going on nature mm -hmm. walks and stuff. And so I think that some of that generational stuff is really exciting and, and now kind of moving into the next phase of like where I am in my cycle and like getting to see that pattern repeated feels really exciting. And I have thought often of grandpa and grandma and what they would, first of all, how thrilled they would be mm. and, and what they would bring into the relationship. You know, it does kind of, I naturally have a million things I want to do with them, but <laughs> also it kind of informs some of those other things because of that was something I did with grandma too, was she took me on many nature walks. And if only I remembered all the Latin names of all the plants she taught me about. She was but incredible with that. Yeah. So I think, yeah, you bring along all that stuff with you. Thinking about grandma and grandpa, is there any like trait or energy or experience or anything that comes to mind for each of them that you would want carried on or like something you think of when you said like, um, I think of what they would say or, you know, what that experience would be like with them. Is there anything that comes to mind? I mean, they both embraced you guys fully the minute they laid eyes on you. I mean, they, I know Rampa was so protective, you know, he, he'd like kind of cradle you in those big hands and <laughs> <laughs> he was a very tall, we have some very, very tall. tall genes in our family, six, four and up. I think with him, the thing that we all probably think stands out is his playfulness and humor. Yeah. Yeah. And he got such enjoyment out of spending time with you guys. And you guys really, I always said that 
he met his match with you and your sister because you just fell right into joking back with him the same way that he put it out. I mean, I think with and with Grandma, she was always so interested in everything you were doing, whether it was a show or some piece of information that you had to give her. Actually, they both were intensely interested in your activities. They both had a real deep interest in what you were doing and thinking about. And and I'll just put that out there. You guys were her, their favorite grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Uh, right. <laughs> Do you have an idea of what you want to be called by him? I've thought about that, and I don't know. I mean, I feel like in some ways that's kind of organic. Like, he'll mm-hmm. figure that out, and I'll be happy yeah. probably with what he decides, <laughs> <laughs> maybe. With a um, reason. So I don't I don't know. I mean, I've thought about different – because I, I feel like since from the time I was growing up, mm-hmm. people – there weren't – there wasn't as much variety, I guess – Maybe mm-hmm. I feel like there's a lot more variety in what people are being called. Yes. Um, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I yeah, just wasn't no, aware I of it. That's right. As long as it, you know, is a genuine kind of thing that Feels he wants natural. to call me. <laughs> <laughs> Title. <laughs> you're going to end up with such a bizarre name and you're going to be like, well, I guess I asked for this. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> I'm really excited to see you guys holding him for the first time or like just that that initial meeting feels really exciting to me. I'm very excited about that. What do you think about having a grandson since we've had, I mean, it's you and me and sister and we've had all girl pets, basically. What do you think about having a boy into this mix? You know, honestly, it was a little bit of a mind shift when you said you were having a boy, but I am so excited about having a grandson. Yeah. And I, you know, we take so many walks these days because it's our one big activity. And I see all these little boys walking around with their parents and they were so adorable. (laughs) I know. And I picture him when I see little boys of various ages. I'm I'm really excited about it. I'm really perfect. It feels perfect to me. Oh, do you have a name you want to throw into the mix? I don't know if I do. Actually, <laughs> I mean, I I feel like I've thought about different names, but I I um, there hasn't been a name that's felt like it's gelled for me. That that, mm-hmm. and I know that you guys have chosen the name, and so maybe I'm not thinking about it as hard as Soft I chosen that we are like. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, no, it's between two names. That's not for sure. And then we only mm-hmm. call him this one name, as you know. Right. Um, so I think because I know that, that I'm not mulling names around so much. If you were yeah. still trying to come up with a name, I think I'd be I'd be thinking about it a little harder. Well, middle name is still on the table. Middle name? Well, I'll think about that. I have gone through many names in my brain about what it could be. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to take a stab at it right now? Well, and we know it's not going to be Boris. <laughs> no, unfortunately, it's not going to be honoring Grandpa Boris. Something, I would love to name a dog Boris or something like that. Right. But then is that insulting to name a dog after your grandfather or is that... He'd take whatever he can get. He'd find that funny, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> he'd take what he can get. <laughs> I guess I can say we entertained. We're like, okay, let's go through the grandparents. Like, are we going to do any of those names and so we we lightly entertained it though I think mm-hmm. naming a baby Boris is is a tough one <laughs> well and there are a couple of Borises out there right now that maybe wait a little I felt more nervous to tell you guys than I was expecting to feel mm-hmm. and not because it was like crazy but I think it's it's just like it's so vulnerable at first to say it out loud mm-hmm. because you're like this is so weird and such a mental shift for me. I got really nervous before we gave you guys the presents because it was mm-hmm. like, especially because I do think even though you knew a surprise was going on, it was not like we had started to have like a lot of conversations about how we were trying or anything like that. Mm-hmm. So it felt like, I was like, is this going to feel really out of the blue? Or like, <laughs> you know. I mean, it was a great surprise, but it was, I mean, I figured that it would be happening sooner rather than later. Yeah. And so and we had talked about that a little bit. It felt pretty natural to hear it. That's good. Exciting and thrilling. Good. I don't know if this translates as a question, but I think a lot obviously about what it's going to be like watching Dave with him. Mm-hmm. What do you think it's going to be like watching your husband become a grandfather? I think he'll go at it as naturally as he did when he became a father. Oh, I love that. Because he he just jumped right in. I mean, it was 
I'm trying to think it was if if we had a lot of conversations about initially like what was it, what's it going to be like when we first meet you guys I mean I think we thought about it and kind of touched on it but I can't say I was surprised but I was it was really so interesting and to see how so easily and naturally he handled you guys and talked to you and it was like he had done it his whole life oh I love that yeah and just really had an ease about it he was never nervous about holding you or I mean it it felt really natural the Mm -hmm. way that he approached dealing with a tiny baby I love that yeah I'm I'm very excited it's gonna be very fun yeah he's very and crazy I mean, mm-hmm. it's. I, I'm so excited to see all of you with him. I'm so excited to meet him. I'm just, I'm so excited. And, like, it's hard to wrap your mind around, but I'm so excited. It's really the greatest thing. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of Week by Week. Please subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. And follow me on Instagram at Week by Week Podcast. Check out the show notes for additional resources I used or referenced in today's episode and for more info about today's guest. This podcast was produced during the COVID-19 pandemic and recorded remotely. Our show today was produced by me, Celeste Busa, and Dave Hill, and edited by Douglas Sarine and Colleen Beasley. Week by Week is a Gumption Pictures production.